Hey there, everyone. Michael Lee Bryan here from the Oraculous School of Astrology with yet another question and answer segment where practicing astrologers bring me their questions and I provide them answers based on my astrological practice. If you're enjoying these Q&A segments and you'd like to work with either myself or an OSA certified astrologer, then by all means, check out our website where you can book yourself a high quality astrological consultation today. Also, I answer many of these questions and more in my book, Mastering Traditional Astrology, A Depth of Beginning in the Celestial Art, which you can buy a copy of on Amazon.com. And if you'd like to become a professional astrologer, then check out our Professional Astrologers Diploma Program, as well as our Medical Astrologers Diploma Program, by visiting the education page of our website. These are just basic things, but I want to be clear because I started off in other systems. All right. In, in natal astrology where you mainly consider the uh, domicile, exaltation, detriment, and fall, and not the minor dignities. Can a minor dignity still serve to prevent a planet from being considered peregrine? The question is whether or not, from a natal astrology perspective, if a planet that has a minor dignity, from a natal astrology perspective, can be considered to not be peregrine. Now, the rules of essential dignity are the rules of essential dignity straight across the board of every application of astrology. If a planet is occupying any of its dignities, whether that is domicile, exaltation, triplicity, term, or face, that planet cannot be thought of as being peregrine. And the reason for that is because peregrination, by definition, is that a planet is not occupying any of its essential dignities. At the Oraculo School of Astrology, I take it a step further and I say that a planet is peregrine when it is not occupying any of its essential dignities or its essential debilities. Therefore, I don't run around the place saying that a planet that is in its detriment is also peregrine because I feel as if it's sufficient enough to mention that the planet is in its detriment. Now, there are some people who contest this, and I think that they are completely right in contesting this, because a planet can be in its detriment, but it can also be in its triplicity, its term, and its face, which isn't necessarily the same quality of detriment as a planet that was in its detriment and truly peregrine, not having any of its minor dignities to bolster it or support it. However, when we get lost in the sauce of those weeds of talking about planets being in their detriment, but also being in their triplicity term and face, I believe that we miss out on the point of the whole narrative of essential debility to begin with. There's this numbers game that people play in astrology, and the numbers game is that Oh, well, if my Venus is in Scorpio, then it's really not doing that bad because if it's a daytime chart, Venus has triplicity. And if Venus is in the second 10 degrees of Scorpio, Venus also has face. And if Venus is in whichever other part of Scorpio, Venus also has her terms. Not whichever other part, because we're smarter than that. If Venus is between 14 degrees of Scorpio and 21 degrees of Scorpio, Venus is also in her terms. It's stressful when people say that, and usually the people who say that are the people who have their Venus in Scorpio, and I don't know why. I actually do know why. So anyway, the point of the matter is that it's a very stressful thing because when you try to reverse engineer essential dignity in that way, granted, it's very valid. The point is, what does that planet feel like on its own terms being in Scorpio? If a planet is in its detriment, that planet is essentially passing through hell. Now, if I'm passing through hell and you give me a bottle of water to drink, then I might be cool in the process of me passing through hell, but it still doesn't change the realities of the fact that I'm in hell. Similarly, if you're passing through hell and you give me a bottle of water and a fan to fan myself, I'm still passing through the valley of the shadow of death. 
And I do fear evil because there really isn't anything around me that can indicate that the material realities of my circumstances are going to change at all. And I think that we have to understand the planets from that perspective and know that when a planet is in its detriment, that planet is in a set of circumstances that fundamentally goes against the very nature of who that planet is. When a planet is in its fall, those circumstances fundamentally go against the very nature of who that planet is. And as such, we cannot really reverse engineer the circumstances surrounding that. Because if I'm in my detriment, I'm in my detriment regardless. And I'm in my detriment during my entire sojourn through that particular sign. So I think that this is a far more important understanding to have from an essential dignities perspective. And... This was also a part of what led me to dropping the minor dignities within the context of natal astrology. So none of my students at the Oracular School of Astrology interprets a natal chart considering the minor dignities of triplicity, term, and face. Some people might say this is reckless. I say I haven't seen a planet in its detriment, but also in its triplicity to manifest in a materially different way than a planet in its detriment. So from the pragmatism of streamlining a system of astrology that can be taught because it works, I think that it makes far more sense for us to focus on the major levels of essential dignity and debility and there are only three levels of essential debility, but I think that it makes more sense for us to focus on the major levels of essential dignity from a natal chart reading perspective, because those tend to carry the greater punch in terms of something that we can materially delineate. And if we find a planet that is not in its domicile, detriment, exaltation, or fall, then chances are the larger environmental circumstances that we find occurring to that planet within that chart are going to be sufficient enough for us to have a deep understanding of how that planet is manifesting within the lifetime of a person without us having to invoke the triplicity, the term, and the face. I can't tell anybody how to practice anything, but I can tell my own students how to practice everything. And at the Oracular School of Astrology, we do not interpret triplicity, term, and face from a natal astrological perspective. We reserve that for horary astrology. We reserve that even for electional astrology when we are trying to bolster a planet by every means possible in order for that planet to deliver the most amount of good for us. However, natally speaking, that isn't something that we do because from a natal perspective, the means by which we can concretely and accurately interpret what's occurring within the natal chart are far less convoluted than the sorts of interpretational guidelines that we would go through from a horary perspective or from an electional perspective. So in answering the question, if a planet is in any of its minor dignities from any perspective of astrology, that planet cannot be considered to be peregrine. This is also true in natal astrology. The difference for me is that if a planet is not in any of its major dignities or debilities from a natal perspective, that's where my essential dignities shop closes. And I no longer go about looking for essential dignities to further bolster that planet from within because I've never found a triplicity, a term, or a face situation by essential dignities that materially altered the actual way a planet delivers its promise within a person's natal chart. This is actually a very important point because while I don't communicate in any of the Facebook groups that I lurk in, I do see the things that people post from time to time. And there was a post recently where someone was talking about how this person's essentially debilitated Mars was in triplicity and therefore this person still was able to manifest a robust career or something to that effect. And when I hear people talking like that, it feels like a quality of armchair astrology that is very easy to interpret after the fact. 
but it doesn't actually feel like a vital application of astrology in the moment. Anybody can make anything mean anything after the fact, and trying to use triplicity term and face to justify why someone's otherwise unextraordinary Mars still was able to manifest something wonderful for them, it seems laborious because there are other reasons why that Mars was able to manifest amazing things within the life of that person. And it really goes beyond the spectrum of essential dignity and ability. People do a lot of strange things as far as essential dignity and ability are concerned. And I think that the strangeness that we find within the use of essential dignities and abilities is proportionate to the level with which people aren't actually reading charts for clients and hearing the stories of people in real time. So another thing that I think is problematic with the whole narrative of essential dignities and abilities within natal astrology is that we tend to think about the essential dignity from the perspective of the planet itself. Oh, my Saturn is in its detriment, therefore dot, dot, dot. But beyond your Saturn being in its detriment, what does that Saturn actually rule within your chart? And by rule, I'm not referring to which planets are in the domiciles of Saturn. What houses is that Saturn ruling within your chart? Because it's not just that you have Saturn problems, it's that you have problems in relationship to the houses that that Saturn is ruling, specifically. And those problems in relationship to those houses that Saturn is ruling are going to be amplified based on the level of other catastrophes happening to your natal Saturn within your chart. So it's not just a matter of my Venus is essentially debilitated, I need to buy this crystal to remediate my Venus. It is what is the area of your life that is being impacted by that planet based on the houses that that planet is ruling that actually is requiring more attention from you in general. So this notion of, of remediating planets in astrology is also a little bit peculiar for me because the buck doesn't stop at the planet itself. The buck stops at what that planet is ruling within your chart from the perspective of a traditional astrological understanding of the houses. And it tends to seem very finicky for me when I hear people running around talking about they need to remediate their sun so they're going to buy this oil, or they need to remediate their Mars so they're going to buy this ruby, or they need to remediate their whatever. And it feels like one more level of consumerism that has made its way into astrology. And I think remediation is a very valid thing to do. I spent a big chunk of my own astrological career studying Geotish, in which remediation is a very big part of that system of astrology. And at the same time, I think that we can get so myopic in terms of saying, I need to fix my son that we don't actually realize that when we have an afflicted sun from a traditional perspective, there are other things we need to be looking at within our chart to see how that sun is impacting other houses, both the house that it occupies as well as the house that it is ruling. And the final thing that I think goes awry when it comes to this narrative of essential dignities and debilities is that people tend to use that to look at their charts and feel as if their entire life is going to be flushed down the toilet because they can't find one essentially dignified planet in their chart, not even if they invoke every minor dignity that exists. And I think that this is a very problematic use of astrology. And once again, it creates an anxiety that isn't necessary. And the reason why I say that anxiety isn't necessary is because within a natal astrological context, you have your entire life to figure out how to navigate your essentially debilitated planet. This isn't true for horary astrology. In horary astrology, if you have an essentially debilitated querent, quesited, and the moon, then it's very likely that the question you're asking about is going to get flushed down the toilet because none of the planets involved that can actually do something 
positive within the reading are doing anything positive within the reading. So within the horary context, our understanding of essential dignity and ability carrying a larger fatalistic overlay over the life of a question makes more sense. But when we think about it within the context of the overall life of a person, people live a very long time for the most part. And within a life where people have years to figure out how to live and how to navigate life, very often we don't even realize that those people have any issues at all within their astrological constitution because they just look like people. And the reason for that is because we all have issues within our astrological constitution and we all just look like people. So I think at the end of the day, we really have to jump off the essential dignity is and ability is situation as far as natal planets are concerned because there is so much more that impacts the overall ecosystem, the flora and the fauna of a life than just the essential dignities or the abilities of the planet involved. And when we get so caught up on the essential dignities and abilities thing, it creates a very narrowed vision in terms of what else is possible for us from a natal astrology perspective because essential dignities and abilities isn't the most important topic from a natal astrology perspective. And we really have to understand how to use that topic of essential dignities and abilities within a much larger and a much more comprehensive rubric of natal chart delineation. Well, I, you answered it 95%. I didn't know what, where you stood on that. I did, but because I'm just, I only took the horary, so mm -hmm. I'm going to plead ignorance in asking <laughs> this, but because peregrination has a sort of isolated, anxious, really feeling weak thing in horary, at least, even paranoid, frightened, isolated, I just wanted to know if, if, if there was, if there was any mitigation of that, if there was something, there was it less flat on its back in that way. Uh, that, and I, that's, that was my point. I don't consider peregrination within natal astrological practice. So I think that that in general is my orientation to that topic. And I think the reason for that is the reasons that I've indicated thus far. If a planet isn't in its domicile, detriment, exaltation, or fall. There are other things to do in terms of interpreting how that planet is going to manifest. So in general, I don't consider peregrination from a natal astrological perspective, and you can, but I find that that notion or that idea of peregrination holds more weight in horary astrology, in electional astrology, but I've not seen it bear a substantive amount of weight from a natal perspective for me to feel the need to bring it in to my natal delineation in a way that moves me in one direction or another. It would move me in a major direction in a horary delineation. It would definitely be something to be aware of within electing an appropriate time astrologically for the initiation of something. However, in no way, shape, or form, um, I moved, not even an iota, when it comes to the assessment of peregrine planets within a natal astrological context. I hope you enjoy our Q&A segment, and if you have astrological questions that you'd like for me to answer, then please feel free to share them in the comment section down below. And remember, my book, Mastering Traditional Astrology, A Depth of Beginning in the Celestial Art, is now out and ready to be purchased. So pick yourself up a copy by visiting Amazon.com today. And if you want to become a professional astrologer, please feel free to check out any of the diploma programs that we offer here at the Oraculo School of Astrology by visiting oraculosastrology.com. I hope to see you in class soon.